Hey, it's Jason from Rockland Technologies, and thank you for joining us for part three of our ethical hacking series. We're going to be doing a deauth attack. A deauth attack is a simple attack that you can do in Kali Linux where you basically kick a device off a network or deauthenticate it from the network without needing to know any administrator passwords or privileges for the router to which you're connected. You simply need to be connected to the same network. Now, you may ask, what is the purpose of such attack? There are many valid reasons for doing this. One could be if you're a network administrator and you're trying to make sure the router hardware in your campus or office building is patched against such an attack, you might want to try this exercise to see if that's the case. So we'll be using an iPhone 11 and we'll be using a Kali Linux PC. What we're going to do is we're going to connect to a network with the iPhone 11 and we're going to kick it off the network using that Kali Linux PC. We're going to give it a go on both 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz, and we're gonna be using the Alpha AWUS 036 ACH to do it. Let's begin. The GitHub driver page has the contents of the driver and some useful additional information including features, compatibility details, kernels, etc. We're gonna scroll down here to the installation steps. And the first step we want to do is this one here, where we make sure we have all of the latest updates in Kali. And we'll paste that in and run the update command. So we're going to come down here to step number four, which has us create a new directory to hold the downloaded driver. We'll copy that in. And we now have a directory called SRC, and that's the next step. We need to go into that directory. Now we want to download the driver, step number six. So we're going to copy this whole command here to get the driver. And we're going to paste it into our terminal window and hit enter. And you can see the driver is downloading. Once the driver download is complete, step number seven instructs us to move into the newly created folder, which is 8812AU. And it tells us if we're running Raspberry Pi, which we're not, we need to run a preparation script. So we can simply skip that and we're gonna come down here and we're going to run the actual installation script. So we'll just copy that link and we'll paste that in. Enter. In our case, the driver's already been installed. I've already done this on this computer, so we're going to get some errors uh, because we've already added it. But in your case, since this is your first time doing the driver install, the driver install should complete, and then you can proceed here to do the sudo reboot command. That'll reboot your computer. <laughs> Once the driver, uh, your system is back up from reboot, you want to go ahead and plug your alpha device into the computer. And we're going to run iwconfig just to make sure the driver install was successful. We should see your alpha device is WLAN 0, and we should currently be in managed mode. What we want to do next is switch over to monitor mode. So we're going to jump over here, and we're going to copy this command, or you can type it in. And what this is going to do is this is going to start, presumably start, monitor mode for us. Now, what oftentimes happens is that it's going to find processes that could interfere. And it's going to tell us to run the airmon ng check kill command to kill those processes. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to kill process number 563. And that should kill both that process as well as the 619 process. So everything looks good. Now we're going to run the IW config command again. And you see we're still in managed mode. So we did kill the processes, but we need to copy this command one more time. And it says monitor mode enabled. And what we're going to do is run iwconfig 
again here just to confirm and here we are now this is important some of you may be familiar with putting a device in monitor mode and seeing it called WLAN 0 MON after the process is complete for this particular github driver at least on our computer it does not do that it just still keeps the name WLAN 0 if on your computer it happens to be called WLAN 0 MON then as we go through the rest of this exercise whenever we type in this you'll want to type in WLAN 0 MON instead. Now, what we need to know is the BSS ID or MAC ID of the device that we want to remove from the network. If this is a network that uh, has multiple devices on there, you're going to need to find out the device MAC ID first. In our case, for our test purposes, we're using an iPhone. You can see it up here on the screen, and you can see our MAC ID is right there ending in 629A. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to go back to our list of commands, and we're going to run this command here so that we can see our networks. Now a whole bunch of networks come up. We're looking for one called Netgear. I'm going to make this a little bit larger so that I can see the full network names. And Netgear 76 is the one I want. So I'm going to hit the Q key twice so that I can quit here. And then I can see the BSS ID for the Netgear network. This is going to allow me to do a scan and see what devices are connected to the Netgear 76 network. So we're going to come back here and we are going to copy this command here. Now this command is not complete, we gotta make some changes to it. Now the first change we need to make is we need to get the MAC address and paste it here where we have router MAC. So we're gonna go up here to Netgear 76, the BSS ID and the MAC are the same thing, so we're going to select that, and we're gonna copy that, and we're gonna come back down here and we're going to delete this information here. That's just a placeholder for us. And we're going to paste in our router's MAC. Okay, great. Now, here we have our WLAN 0. That's the name of our device. We have our router's MAC. Now, we need to go find the channel. And the channel is right here. It's channel 11. So we're going to come down to the end. Change that to 11, and we're going to run the command. Now it should start to list the BSS ID, aka MAC ID, of the devices that are connected to our Netgear 76 network. And remember, ours ends in 629A. So we're going to wait to see that pop up on the list there. And there it is, 629A. So now we can hit Q twice to quit out of this. We don't need to run this any longer because we have our MAC ID here. Even though we already know the MAC ID, we actually want to run the command we just ran so we can be sure that it's showing up and connected. If it's not showing up when we run this command, we won't be able to successfully execute the deauth command. That's why we run this command. But now that we have verified that our MAC ID is showing up here, we can go back and run this final command here. And again, this has some placeholder information in it, so we do need to make some changes before we run this command. First, it's asking for the device MAC. So that's our BSS ID or our MAC ID for our iPhone. We're going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to come down here. And we're going to paste that in. Next, over here, it's asking for the router's MAC. That's our Netgear MAC ID. That's right here. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to paste that in. Now, this D is not necessary. This is when we do it on the 5 gigahertz, so we should be able to delete that. And everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll notice all these packets are being injected, and I am looking at the phone at the same time. And you see that we are no longer associated with the Netgear network. You'll also notice that the packets have dropped way down here. So our deauth was successful.
For this part, we're going to show how to de-auth from a 5 gigahertz network. The process is very similar, but there's some different things we need to do in the command line. So we're going to bring our terminal window back up. We're going to go back here. And now what we need to do is run arrow dump, but we need to do it in such a way that it's going to show us 5 gigahertz network. So we're going to copy this command here, paste that in. And now it's showing us 5 gigahertz networks. Now we're looking for one called Netgear 76 5G. And there it is, so I'll hit Q twice. Zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit more legible for you. So there it is, Netgear 76 5G. We remember um, previously we worked on Netgear 76. That's not on the list because we're doing a 5 gigahertz band scan. So we see our 5 gigahertz network here. Now we need to go back on our phone to verify that we're connected to the Netgear 76 5G. And we see that our Mac ID now, because Apple changes the Mac ID, we see it's D480 is the name of our Mac ID. If you're using an Android device or another laptop for this exercise, your Mac ID should be the same as it was in the 2.4 for your device. For the router, of course, it'll be different. Now, we need to come back and run this command again. You'll remember this is the one that shows us what devices are connected to the router. But we have to make some modifications here just like we did before. So we're going to go up and we're going to get the router's MAC ID. And we're going to come back down to our command here. And we'll paste it in there. And then don't forget we need to know the channel as well. And if we look up here we can see our channel is 149. So we'll go ahead and delete router channel and replace it with 149 and hit enter. And it's going to tell us all the devices connected to the Netgear 76 5G on this channel. And don't forget our device ends in D480. So we're going to wait until we see the D480 Mac ID pop up on the screen. There it is. So we're going to go ahead and hit Q twice again to quit out of there because now we have the information we need to run the final attack. We'll copy this command here. We'll paste it in. And remember, in the first exercise, I removed the dash D. We're going to leave that in here because that's necessary to get the injection to work on the 5 gigahertz band. But we're going to do the same things we did in our first exercise with the 2.4 gigahertz. We're going to get the device MAC, which is this one here. We'll copy that. paste it in, and then we've got to go get the router MAC, which is over here. Copy that. Come down. Paste it in. Now if you're typing the commands instead of doing a copy-paste, I recommend going back through to make sure that you don't have any typos in here. And assuming everything looks good, we're going to check out our phone now and make sure that it shows we're connected to the Netgear 76 5G network, and we are. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter, and you'll see there go the attacks. And we look on our phone, and boom, we are off the Netgear 76 5G network, and you'll see our packet numbers have dropped down to zero. So we have successfully completed the injection on 5 gigahertz, and we can close out of this terminal. And thank you for watching episode 3 of our ethical hacking series. Feel free to comment below and visit us at rockland.com for a wide selection of Linux compatible Wi Fi products.